Well, one person who didn't go along with the government program back in 1976 was a freshman congressman, a doctor from Texas, none other than Ron Paul. Well, tonight I spoke with him about swine flu then and now. So, Congressman, you've been through all of this before. You saw it back then. You saw what happened now. And what's your take on it? Are we doing too much? Are we overhyping this? Meaning all of us, the media and the government. Yes, they are. It's overblown, grossly so. And I just wish people would back off a little bit, stop and think for a minute, and not panic people. There's too much hysteria in the country, and so far there hasn't been that much great da that great a danger. So uh, the sooner we get calmer, the better I'll feel. So take us through it. Uh, it was back then, 1976, I believe. You were a freshman congressman. Take us through what happened. The same sort of thing, swine flu. People were concerned about it. Uh, talk to me about it. In 1976, I was sworn in in a special election, and I obviously was very new to the situation. Uh, it was at that time that um, Ford was running against uh, Reagan, and it was a tight race, and it was politicized, and the flu came in, and it was a big deal. We had a vote to uh, indicate that we should inoculate everybody in the country. Medically, it made no sense to me, and politically, it sounded like a, a bad deal. There were two of us that voted against it. Another doctor, Dr. Larry McDonald, and I uh, said it was bad medicine, was bad politics. And it turned out that uh, that was pretty perceptive because uh, we only had uh, one person die from the flu, and that might have been from other reasons. Twenty-five people died from the inoculations. If you were in charge, what would you do? I would probably do a lot less and just think about it and see if there's any need to do anything at all. This idea that government has to come to the rescue, I think it's more or less a reflection that we have too many people in government that like the idea that they have to justify their existence. So whether it's in foreign policy, scare the people to death, great fear, and then you can do what you want. If it was an economic crisis, scare the people to death, and then you can socialize the economy. In medicine, scare the people to death, and then you'll say, oh, only the government can take care of us. So I think a lot of that is happening and we're on the move to socialized medicine. Okay. So we're scaring the people and saying the only people that can save us uh, will be the government. What's your response? What, what have people said to you since you made this video and you came out and said, hey, you know what, tamp this down a little bit. Come on, let's stand back and, and don't be so crazy about this. What have people said to you? Do you know what? I have to tell you the honest truth. I have not had one person say to me that, you know, that I have undermined uh, anything about dealing with this problem. Everybody comes up, you know, that's exactly what I thought. It's about time somebody said it. It is a, just an attempt for governments to uh, scare the people. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that might disagree. Right. And I don't downplay the seriousness. I, I, as a physician, I don't say, well, there's no danger at all whatsoever. But you got to put it in perspective. Put it in perspective of HIV and AIDS and tuberculosis and all these things, it really is a total non-event. There you go. Everything old is new again. But some are saying better safe than sorry.